You may steal for yourselves the next time. I've done my duty. But, cousin, sure you won't dis... dis in our distress, you won't desert us. If she in the least suspects I'm running away, I shall certainly be locked up. Or sent to my Aunt Pedigree's, which is ten times worse. Mm, to be sure, aunts of all kinds are cursed bad things. But what can I do? I've got you a pair of horses that will fly like whistle jacket. And I'm sure you can't say, but I've courted you nicely before her face. Mom, here she comes. <laughs> Have I caught you, my pretty doves? And what are we cooing? What are we whispering? Cousin Tony promises to give us more of his company at home. Indeed, he shan't leave us again. You won't leave us any more, Cousin Tony, will you? <laughs> no, I'd sooner leave my horse in a pound than leave you when you smile upon one so. <laughs> pretty innocent. Mm. I'm mm. sure I've always loved Cousin Con's hazel eyes. And her pretty long fingers that she twists this way and that over the hapsicles. Like a parcel of bob. <laughs> ah, that boy! He would charm the bird off the tree. The jewels, my dear Con, should be yours incontinently. Oh. Yes, you shall have them. Oh, isn't he a sweet boy, my dear? You shall be married tomorrow, and we'll put off the rest of his education to a fitter opportunity. Well, Squire, hey, I have a letter for your worship. Mm -hmm. Who does it come from? Hey, your honor must ask that of the letter. Well, I could wish to know, though. Oh, the cursed cramp piece of penmanship as ever I saw in my life. Mm. Oh, cursed up and down hand, as if it was disguised in liquor. Dear sir, aye, that's that. And then there's an M, and a T, Ooh. and an S. Uh, it's odd. I can read the outside of my letters well enough, but when I come to open it, it's all buzz. That's hard, very hard. For the inside of the letter is always the cream of the correspondence. My dear. Can I give you any assistance? Oh, pray let me read it. No one can make out a cramped hand better than I. Do you know who it's from? Oh, I can't tell, except it's from uh, Dick Ginger, the feeder. Oh, I, I, so it is. <laughs> um, uh, dear Squire, hoping you are in health as, as I am at present, the, uh, the uh, gentlemen of, of Goose Green Club have, have cut the gentlemen of uh, Shake Lake quite out of feather. Uh, the odds of... Uh, oh, it's, it's all about cocks and fighting. It's of no consequence. Here, put it away. Put it away. Well, it's of all the consequence in the world. I'd not lose the rest of it for a guinea. Here, Mother, do you oh, make it out? Yeah. Of no consequence. Hm. How's this? Dear Squire, I am now waiting for Miss Neville with a post chaise at the bottom of the garden. I expect you'll assist us with a pair of fresh horses, as you promised. Dispatch is necessary. That's the hag. Your mother will otherwise suspect us. Yours, Hastings. Oh, 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 oh. oh heaven grant me patience. I shall run distracted. Oh, my rage chokes me. Oh, I hope, madam, you will suspend your resentment for a few moments. Plain spoken, madam. You are most miraculously polite and engaging. And quite the very pink of courtesy and circumspection, <laughs> Adam. And you, you ill-favored oaf, are you two joined against me? Well, I'll defeat all your plots in a moment. Since, madam, you have a pair of fresh horses ready, instead of running away with your spark, prepare this instant to run off with me. Your old aunt's pedigree will keep you secure. I warrant you. You too, sir. Prepare to make the box and guard us on our way. Here, Roger, Diggory, the hag is it. I'll show you the hag. No, I'm completely ruined. Yes, that's sure. Oh, you stupid oh. oaf. By the laws, miss, it was your own cleverness and not my stupidity that did your business. You were so nice and so busy with your shake bags and goose greens that I thought you could never be making believe. So... You have shown our letter and betrayed us. Was this well done? God, sir, it was her doing, not mine. Oh. So I have been finely used here among you, rendered contemptible, driven into ill manners, despised, insulted, oh. laughed at. Here's another. We shall have all Bedlam broke loose presently. And there, sir, is a gentleman to whom you owe every obligation. Ah, what can I say to him? A mere boy, an idiot. He's beneath contempt. An insensible cub. Replete with tricks and mischief. Bah! Oh, bless me, but I'll fight you both, one after the other with baskets. As for him, he's below resentment, but your conduct 
Mr. Hastings requires an explanation. Is this a time for explanation? But, sir, Mr. I... Marlowe, sir, believe me, if we maintained you in your ignorance, it was only because it was too late to undeceive you. Depend upon it, sir, I shall expect some satisfaction. I am entirely at your service, sir, when and where you please. Oh, heaven! Madam, your fan, your muff, and your gloves, and the horses are waiting. Mr. Marlowe, sir, if you knew what a scene of constraint and ill nature lies before me, I'm, I'm sure it would convert your resentment into pity. If I leave you thus, I shall die with apprehension. I beseech you, I implore you. Pray be pacified. Forgive me, madam. I do not wish to add to your distress. Oh, forgive me, George. You know the hastiness of my temper. The torture of my situation is my only excuse. Mr. Constance, why Constance, I say? I'm coming. <laughs> Constancy. Remember, constancy is the word. Farewell, Mr. Marlowe. Come, sir! Coming! How can I support this? To be so near happiness and yet so far. You see now, young gentlemen, the effects of your folly. He can't, I've hit it. Your hands. Yours and yours, my poor sulky. My boots there, ho! Meet me two hours hence at the bottom of the garden. And if you don't find Tony Lumpkin, a more good-natured fellow than you thought, I'll give you leave to take my best horse. We're the heroes of the fight. We're the pride of England's might. In two hours' time, remember, my boots there. Hold! <laughs> 